A pump would be nice, but remember, there's no financial advice. Crypto Badgers. Thanks for joining the Crypto Badgers, two gens that like to do our research. I'm Max Power, joined as always by Matt, aka by Z Dip. Say a very warm welcome to all of our subscribers and anyone new. We do uh, appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, been a big week for the Badgers. Uh, we uh, just did our roadmap reveal special on ArcFire Weekly. Uh, big thanks to all the uh, feedback from that video. But today we are going to do a video on the Polygon blockchain and uh, why it appears set to play a major role in the future of Web3 adoption. Of course, uh, our subscribers from the Arc community, I'm sure, will uh, hopefully enjoy learning more about the chain where migration of the project will occur in, uh, well, maybe Q3 uh, later this year. We'll talk about the uh, implications for ARK in the back half of this video. Matt, uh, Polygon, it's been a chain that we've been familiar with uh, for, for some time, but one we've actually uh, not not uh, done too much on over recent times, but it's certainly had a hell of a run. Yeah, it's uh, it's become a very very popular network, uh, and the Matic token uh, has held up extremely well in this bear market, a lot better than most. Yeah, it had one of the all time charts, really, didn't it? In the last bull, uh, it certainly so did. At around one cent and went up to you know almost three dollars at one point. There, it was a quite a breathtaking run um, that it had there at that point, and certainly uh, had its followers. And really, the context for that, and I suppose people potentially new to crypto might say. Well, you know, what do you need sort of all these chains for? And, you know, and one of the reasons, I suppose, why Polygon took off was, um, you know, as it stands now, we, we don't really have that perfect blockchain. Um, the old trilemma, Matt, the old blockchain trilemma. Yes, the trusty trilemma. <laughs> um, you know, if you want a blockchain to be fast, you have to sacrifice security or decentralization. And, um, you know, I suppose really that the big problem for crypto has been scaling you know, for blockchains. And, you know, if you're going to get mass adoption in the space, you know, you're going to need to be able to process a large amount of transactions quickly and at a low cost. And, you know, Polygon, you know, tack has been one of the leading chains in terms of tackling that. Ethereum, for example, it, it lacks the scalability, but it is very decentralized and secure. That bloody mm. trilemma, Matt, we just can't solve. <laughs> yes, it's the holy grail, isn't it, Max? Yes. Um, so I suppose just a quick history on Polygon itself uh, for those new. Um, I suppose it was aimed at being a scaling solution on top of the Ethereum blockchain. It was actually formerly known as Matic uh, before it rebranded in 2021. And the token sale for Matic took place in 2019. And the mainnet was launched in May 2020, just as we were about to gear up for uh, a big bull run. Um, but there's a big change coming, and a lot of people may not realize the differences between the current Polygon mainnet and what's coming with Polygon ZK EVM, which is uh, where we understand, you know, ArcFi is going to end up launching. So this is important, and uh, especially uh, for users like us, um, you know, <laughs> I guess want to be honest, we actually stopped using Matic because it was a bit buggy. We found that, you know, the odd transaction would fail, didn't love using it, but it's going to be a different beast in terms of what's to come um, with this ZK EVM. So there's big dollars behind this, Matt. I mean, there's, there's the uh, Polygon Labs has put a billion dollars of funds Ooh, yeah. attracting sort of the best builders and experts in ZK EVM technology. Um, and they're also using that to incentivize projects and protocols to deploy on the new layer two. So they got over 100 staff working on this, uh, on the development of the chain, and it's really just become a thriving ecosystem. So, I mean, this is a big business here. This ain't uh, just some little chain. There's um, a lot of development taking place. And some big brands, Max, some big brands. That's right. And that's really, you know, cutting edge technology. I mean, we all know, we've probably heard of ZK Sync. They're still in development at the moment. So there's going to there's gonna be some ZK wars going on, I think, in the narrative. Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, in the next bull. But so currently, in terms of the main differences, currently, oh no, we'll try and make this as simple as possible because there's a, even for, you know, people like you and I have been in the game for six or so years now, um, you know, understanding the terminology behind this is tricky. Um, and so let's, the best way to say it is currently Polygon uses a side chain and confirms transactions with their own proof of stake mechanism. So while users can bridge between the side chain and the main Ethereum chain, it's really still on this own side chain that the Matic token where you pay the gas and everything's happening to verify all transactions with a proof of stake consensus, which is that's 
valid the validators locking a, a large chunk of polygon or matic tokens that are obviously by locking those up means they're invested um you know for the tokens to have valid transactions and they all make sure that everything's true and clean on the polygon blockchain the move to polygon zk evm uses what's called a zero knowledge rollups when zero knowledge proofs is the other sort of word that gets bandied around and really the simple way to explain this is that this technology allows blockchains to prove something to be true without revealing all your credentials. So that means transactions can be private. It's like if, uh, say, Matt, you know, I said, show me your um, ID and prove your age, and you just showed me the bit with the age, but maybe not all your address and, and everything <laughs> like that, all your sort of personal detail. Indeed. Um, it's also a much closer replica to the Ethereum environment, so it's easier for developers to migrate from Ethereum to Polygon ZKVM. The coding is exactly the same for smart contracts. Um, there were some subtle changes, um, you know, with Polygon proof of stake network. Um, so that that's going to make it much easier for developers to to get building on this. And um, you know, lastly, and perhaps most importantly, what the sort of zk rollups do is they actually allow multiple transactions to be aggregated into a single transaction, um, which is then able to be verified. So that's going to significantly reduce the amount of data that needs to be stored on the blockchain. I mean, if you can think of it this way, uh, Matt, when when transactions are happening, all those computations that take place to prove that person A has five tokens and that they're sending five tokens to person B and that their address is correct, all that computational verification takes up space on the blockchain in the case of Ethereum. Whereas here in ZKVM, all this is done off chain which obviously greatly reduces uh, the amount of data and therefore you can fit more transactions into a block. Um, therefore, and that just obviously reduces the bottleneck, means you can fit a lot more transactions in faster and obviously a lot cheaper as well, which is gonna be a big factor. So currently on uh, transactions on the proof of stake Polygon network cost around one to two cents, depending on the network activity. And this is compared to, say, BSC, which is 15 to 20 cents. Uh, 15 to 20 cents might not sound like a lot, but if you're doing a lot of transactions, it does add up. It certainly does. And uh, on ZK EVM, fees are going to drop another 90%. So we're looking at you know fractions of a cent for transactions, which is going to be very attractive uh, to people coming over. And let's face it, you know we've spent some ridiculous amounts on transactions. Oh, uh, crazy. Oh, my past. God. And it, I'd, I'd shudder to think how much actually. <laughs> I mean, and so you can just, in terms of getting mass adoption, this is what people are going to want. And the fact is, is that with this ZKVM technology, it's still using the Ethereum blockchain for all of that security. So you're getting a nice. bit of the best of both worlds. You're getting all the, the pace and the cheapness of transactions, but while still getting that, you know, security and decentralization of the Ethereum network that this is built on top of. So um, it's a very exciting technology. It's still very new. It's only in the beta mode at the moment. So you can only uh, kind of just deposit using the Polygon bridge. Don't go off doing anything risky. Um, and I suppose in terms of ArcFi, you know, there's still plenty of time before all this happens to get your head around. So perhaps, Matt, you know, you might want to go into why, say, BSC is not the best idea. <laughs> yeah, it's certainly not, Matt. Max. Uh, unfortunately, uh, BSC has sort of got itself now a pretty poor reputation for for rugs, low quality sort of degen projects, sort of in general, I'd say. And you sort of couple that with uh, the recent CFTC charges issued against Binance, and also the Wells notice as well from uh, that was issued uh, to Paxos in relation to BUSD. And it's sort of combining all of that; it becomes pretty obvious as to why serious projects will not be spending their time building on BSC moving forward. And we're sort of seeing the result of this playing out in real time, as you sort of see the Poly Polygon network now having more transaction vol volume than BSC. So I would expect uh, as time goes by, that gap is, is going to widen. And I guess uh, if one were to consider, Max, the worst case scenario, I think uh, any project that chooses to remain on BSC is really pretty much a a sitting duck. We know there's network risks um, with their validator infrastructure, and we already know that BUSD will cease to be redeemable in early 2024. 
that is, of course, unless uh, C- CZ can pull a rabbit out of the hat and conjure up some sort of solution. But at the end of the day, it's uh, just not worth you know taking the risk. Why would you take the risk, uh, give, given there's this great other choice that uh, exists out there? So I think um, it's probably worthwhile talking about the benefits specifically to the ArcFi ecosystem with this migration. You touched on earlier that transaction uh, transactions are going to be way way cheaper. I mean, B- BSC Max. When we first started using BSC, it was it was it was pennies or or a penny to transact on there. But that's no longer the case, and you know BSCs become expensive compared to to many many other chains to use. So, as we understand it, and we've done a little bit of research on this, the, a single swap on this new Polygon zk EVM network is anticipated to cost a fraction of a cent. I think I, think I saw it doc, saw it documented somewhere. It was like in dollar terms, sort of. 0.00008 per transaction. So it's it's almost near enough to be considered free, really. Uh, and when you think of the savings to ArcFi investors, I think they'll be pretty enormous. And, you know, we always try to encourage people to use that auto allocate function, uh, Max, but there'd be literally no excuse for not using it uh, with this move to uh, Polygon ZK EVM. Uh, the other thing is too, another huge benefit that... Uh, you know, it's probably not not talked about enormously for the team is that they're going to be rubbing shoulders with projects and companies that are building some some very serious projects for the Web3 environment. So you've got companies like Instagram and Disney, Nike, uh, Mercedes-Benz Meta, many other big companies, they've chosen Polygon. So I think there's definitely a credibility factor to be gained uh, by making the move. And I'm sort of a bit of a believer that you sort of, you know, at the end of the day, you are sort of uh, who you mix with. So I think uh, from that point of view, I think it's a it really adds an enormous amount of credibility to the yeah. project. Yeah, I've got, uh, Peter, there was a tweet here I saw from Lark Davis. Uh, just oh, Lark. We know Lark. Your man, Lark. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you can see here that, uh, you know, Meta chose Polygon as their blockchain to host their Instagram NFT feature. Nike of uh, launch.swoosh, virtual apparel NFT platform being built on Polygon. Starbucks recently launched Odyssey NFT rewards program. Um, you know, pretty pretty big deal, really. Uh, yeah, it is. In, in terms of Web three, for big brands, it's and obviously when when these type of brands get involved, it attracts others, right? You know, absolutely. You, if you're a company and thinking to yourself, well, which chain am I going to choose? Well, if Nike and Meta <laughs> and Starbucks are doing st- stuff on Polygon, um, safety in, safety in numbers, Max. <laughs> that's right. Um, and obviously, this uh, ZKVM is going to, I'm sure, going to play a, a, a big role in that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and I think the move to um, Polygon ZKEVM, I think it's going to enable ArcFi to speak to a, a brand new audience as well, Max. I mean, many of these investors. Um, you know, in that poly, in and around the poly, Polygon ecosystem, they wouldn't normally go near a project that was on the Binance Smart Chains. Ch- sorry, Binance, Binance Smart Chain for some of the reasons that we've sort of already stated. So I think there's a really great opportunity to get lots of new people taking a look at the ArcFi ecosystem and the roadmap that has been released. And I, you know, sort of when we sort of think back now with uh, the project launching on BS, BSC, it's kind of been, it's kind of brilliant, really, because. You know, we've sort of been the ROI, ROI DAP space, you know, really existed on BSC. So sort of been able to harvest the community from BSC and then move it over to something that's uh, way more credible and, and more built for purpose. Also, the uh, ArcFi liquidity will be moved uh, from BUSD to the ArcG token, which is the new proposed on-chain gold token, as stated in the roadmap. Importantly, the Polygon network supports Chainlink's proof of reserves technology, Max, and that is absolutely essential to the creation of this type of token and any future commodities-related tokens that the team wish to introduce down the track. And I know there's already talk about doing a silver one. There could be a number of commodities that uh, will benefit from uh, the integration with this technology. So so they're the sort of key takeaways as I see it uh, in terms of the benefits to, to ArcFi. Yeah, uh, just, uh, I'll interject before you go on there, Matt. Yeah, so sure. just before we uh, get into sort of how it'll all work, um, the one thing else, one other thing I just wanted to show people was this, this idea of the, the growth of L2s as well. Mm. Um, one of the great site here, L2 Beat, which just sort of measures the growth. Yeah. And you can see it's still relatively new to crypto. I mean, you look at 2021, there was $367 million worth of Funds on L2s is now 9.4 billion. Ooh. 
Um, so the growth really in a couple of years, I mean, even at the start of, you know, 2022, yeah, where have we got on the chart here? 2022, there was, you know, what is that? Five billion. So it's sort of doubled in the course of a year in terms of the amount of money on there. And obviously Arbitrum is the leading um, layer two at the moment in terms of volume. We saw that airdrop recently. And obviously you can see here the different technologies, the two, the optimistic roll-up, which are not a sugary treat, as we've said before, <laughs> good old roll-ups used to like for lunch. Um, um, <laughs> um, and then there's, there's sort of zero, uh, zero uh, knowledge technology. You can see ZK Sync uh, era here. It was now one that's moving up the ranks, 252 million. And I just did want to show that Polygon ZKBM, this just shows how new it is. It's just sort of 5 million bucks on there at the moment. But I think safe to say that, yeah. That will be one of the fastest growing um, chains as it sort of gets through its beta. Because obviously, while these chains are in beta, it, there is risk. Um, the chains are still being tested. Um, and uh, as I understand it, Matt, it's going to be, um, you know, ArcFire won't be moving until that beta is complete and the proper mainnet's launched. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. So uh, uh, as my father would once say, um, they, uh, they'll be hurrying slowly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I guess um, people in the in the ArcFi ecosystem are going to sort of wonder about how this migration will work and and what it means in practice for them. Uh, we've talked about some of the benefits of moving to Polygon zk EVM, but uh, I think it's important to understand that that this new Polygon zk EVM network will will use Ethereum for gas fees. Yeah, that's massive. Yeah, not Matic tokens. So, and we've talked about how just how cheap they're going to be. I mean, yeah fractions of fractions of a cent. And just so we're clear, the the, the side chain of proof of stake, I believe, is, is still actually going to continue to exist. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. And while the Polygon ZK EVM, which will use Ethereum for gas, the Matic token will act as a governance token for that ZK EVM. But uh, for, in, in terms of ArcFi users, um, no new wallet address is going to be required. You'll use the same address that you currently use, but you'll need to add the Polygon ZK EVM RPC to your MetaMask or other Web3 wallet uh, to be able to a- access the network. So you've got that option there sitting on the screen, Max. Um, obviously, this is not something people need to do now, but uh, Chainlist is, is a good place to go when you're downloading those new RPCs. Very easy Can to do. Can we do it? Yeah, let's have a crack, son. Oh, I, I'm already getting ahead. I'm just because I know what I'm doing. So you can see here, it's got a list of all the different chains or, not, or, or at least all of the EVM chains uh, that exists that you can connect your MetaMask wallet to. And this is uh, this is really the only way, in my opinion, to actually add a new network um, to, to your wallet. Um, doing it manually does involve some sort of risk of getting uh, the details wrong. If you're not sure, all we're going to have to do, search in here, Polygon. Now you can see there's Polygon mainnet, which is the current, um, you know, the current mainnet there that's been live for a couple of years uses Matic to pay gas. Where ArcFi is going to end up here is on the Polygon ZKVM. I've actually not added it to my wallet yet, so I'm going to do that now. You go, girl. I do, I do have uh, Matic on there, so it's this simple. It'll bring a little pop-up here where it puts in all your network network URL and chain IDs that you used to have to do manually. And I'm just going to hit approve. And I'll switch to that network because I'm on Binance Smart Chain at the moment. And you'll see now in the click of a couple of buttons, I'm on Polygon ZK EVM here. And obviously now in order to start using it, I would need to bridge over at least a small amount of ETH um, to be able to pay gas, the, what will be very small gas fees on that Polygon um, ZK EVM. Otherwise, I won't be able to perform any transactions. Nice, Max. Nice. So, yeah, people can still use their same wallet address that they currently use, the same Web3 wallet of their choice. So if you're using MetaMask, you can continue to do that. So this is really, really simple stuff. So I guess the big uh, thing is, Max, is when is all this happening? Well, according to the roadmap, it is scheduled. The migration is scheduled for Q3 this year. So it's only a matter of a few months away. We are aware of some projects that plan to launch on Polygon ZK EVM as early as June. So I guess, you know, there's going to be a flood of projects come on here. Um, So I guess the team will wait to see that everything's, you know, smooth and clear and then uh, then make their move. But uh, we don't really know how long the migration, like the migration itself will take, but sort of based on other projects of sort of move from chain to chain, that's usually sort of a 24-hour exercise. So whether or not there's a short period of time where 
we lose some rewards as I mean, these are all things that are yet to be determined, but uh, even if, even if that is the case, it's a very, very small price to pay in my opinion for, uh, for what this migration will offer the project because the benefits are, are really, really substantial. And it's just, uh, I think also important to point out and to be 100% clear, there's, there's not going to be two ArcFi worlds operating here, you know, one being on Binance Smart Chain, the other being on Polygon ZK EVM. When the migration takes place, the ArcFi ecosystem will be operational only on Polygon. So obviously, as we move sort of closer to that migration date, the uh, the team obviously will provide, you know, specific actions if we need to take any to assist with that migration. But I think whatever those actions are, they'll be a really, really simple exercise for users. But uh, just overall, Max, um, I've got a warm and fuzzy feeling about this migration. I think they've chosen a fantastic chain that supports their roadmap and their, their objectives and the sort of products that they want to roll out. And, you know, I think going to Polygon ZK EVM is sort of going for the gold standard. Yeah, I tend to agree. And I think really the way that where it's going to be more technical is actually for the uh, the devs yes. uh, to make this Indeed. move. So I think for the user, it's going to be very straightforward. Uh, the devs will have their work cut out, I'm sure, just checking because obviously, I don't know about you, Matt, I get nervous when I send any <laughs> form of, uh, you know, amount of money across chain, let alone, you know, the entire liquidity of a project and migrating that. So that that's for people who are super experienced and thankfully the ArcFi team uh, have, have got that. Um, yeah, looking forward. And I think in the end, you wouldn't want it any other way. I think starting on BSC was, was you know, in my opinion, the right place to start for this project. Um, and now, you know, looking at the roadmap and where the team's going, it, it's a natural progression, I think, to make to make this move and be at the, what is really the forefront of blockchain technology um, and being potentially one of the first projects to actually be on there, uh, depending on how things pan out. So all very exciting and uh, lots to look forward to. And I think I'd just say to anyone out there who is um, sort of quite new to crypto, I really encourage you to take the time to actually learn how Bitcoin and Ethereum blockchains work, both the proof of work and the proof of stake sort of consensus, because once you can get a decent handle on how they work, then understanding something like this with ZK EVM becomes possible. I think <laughs> you don't know how uh, the, the mum and dad of blockchains works. It becomes very difficult to understand this. And it's not crucial to understand all of this either. But I think in terms of just being able, it's always just nice to know what you're invested on. Yeah, for sure. Um, if you're out at a, uh, you know, a dinner party or someone and someone tries to hold you to account about what all this stuff is, it's always nice to be able to respond and um, sound like you know what you're talking about. So I'd encourage people to, you know, take the time to have a look around blockchains. You've got obviously Mr. Z around who's as knowledgeable as anybody. Of course, uh, anyone can come into the uh crypto badges tg and ask us any questions in there um because even for us you know this it takes a bit of digestion to understand all this but i think the main point to get across is there is going to be very little for anyone to worry about from a technical standpoint in terms of making this change very little so um no need no need for concern that we can see anyway no, couldn't agree more max well, I think that's a wrap, Matt. I um, hope everyone found this educational, informative, and even slightly entertaining because talking about <laughs> roll-ups and uh, zero-knowledge proofs is not always entertaining for everyone, but uh, <laughs> hopefully uh, uh, you found it informative. So uh, I'm Max Power, and uh, thank you to Bysy Dips. Uh, we'll be back for our Arc Fire Weekly as per normal programming on uh, Sunday. So uh, thanks, everyone. Cheers, Maxie. Sir, coming live from the crypto world, bringing you all that you need. Let's go. This is the YouTube crypto show with two guys who are kind of in the know. Crypto badges are here, so you're in the clear. No worry or fear, yeah, we're helping you steer. Shouts to the team, we can't forget. Max Power and Bazi Dips. Don't get wrecked. A pump would be nice, but remember, there's no financial advice. Crypto badges.